Hey, what a do, baby boat. Um, hello. In this video, I am just going to be giving you like a rundown on one of Peanut's recent games on Gragas that he played, and I'm pretty much just going to be breaking down what I think my interpretation of his thought process is. Because um, in this game, he honestly he played really good and really calculative. Um, calculative is a super important word for this particular game. It describes how he played it. Um, and hopefully, we'll extract the information that we need to. We'll take out the tips and the strategies. Um, and then you can apply it to your own game. Um, so yeah, fuck, let's just break into it. First off, this is at the three minute mark. Um, and obviously this is just after his normal clear. He did red, uh, wolves, that's not wolves, raptors, wolves, and then blue. Um, and now he's obviously just taking his blue buff. And Lee Sin's matching him as well, doing blue, uh, this one, this one, and this one. If we look, sorry, that's a thing. If we look at the state of the lanes... From Lee Sin, I'm so sorry for those Skype messages, holy fuck. If we look at the state of the lanes, um, from Lee Sin's perspective, there is no gank potential, like, because we can assume he's on the top side of the map because he did the normal clear. He started bot side, we're going to assume he's on the top side getting his red buff. Um, yeah, Lee Sin can't gank mid or top. Top, like, maybe, like, maybe there's a 30% chance, but look how close he is to his turret. The lane isn't pushing up. Um, and for this reason... Uh, Gragas decides to get, or Peanut decides to get his Scuttler. Just to take some vision away. I'm actually kind of surprised that he didn't go for a gank right now, which is why one of the first tips is gank timing, okay? This is specifically for high elo people. The usual clear that I've seen most junglers do is 1, 2, 3, and then gank, or they do the level 3 gank. They just take 3 camps, they get their level 3, and then they go for a gank. Because from my perspective, we look at this and we say, okay, it's possible to gank Akali, he has red buff, she's pushed up, blah blah blah, and then it's also possible to gank Syndra, she's pushed up, she's on half health, so why didn't he go for it? So it's something to think about for you high, lo high elo people in particular, is gank timing, maybe you should switch it up every now and then, and I make this mistake myself of always doing the same pathing and always doing the 1, 2, 3, then gank, and instead in this case, he went 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then he goes for a gank after that. Which is ridiculous. The timing is crazy. Speed this shit up. And now he goes for a gank. Isn't that? Like, I'm not gonna say stupid. Like, I was about to say, but isn't that like different? Isn't that so cr creative of mixing up these jungle timings? Because that's so common. One, two, three, gank. This dude took like six camps away or some shit. So obviously, okay, Leeson, there, Leeson was there for the counter gank. Um, the most important things to remember, there are a couple of ganking tips you can take away, is that I'm sure Peanut was watching top lane to see if Akali was going to ward in the first place, because the wave is pushing towards the turret, and Akali has no escape skill other than you know her W, if you consider that an escape skill. Um, She hasn't had time to ward, and I'm sure Peanut has been watching this, which is why he went for the gank in the first place. Um, the only thing that maybe he didn't anticipate for is Leeson's counter gank. Um, but he makes some fucking flash moves right here, and he can't, he like plays Leeson to the nines, so we're about to watch it. And then the most important thing in this whole replay is exactly what happened after that. Watch this shit. Isn't that genius? I thought, I thought that was so genius that he just queued onto, um... Onto Akali because he knew Lee Sin was going to jump there. This is the most important part, okay? So first off, we have the gank timing. Um, that's specifically for high elo people. For you low elo people, gank timing doesn't really matter. People don't necessarily even think about warding in the first place. Or they don't even think, okay, it's three minutes now. The enemy jungle is going to gank. You can just go for the gank if you've seen that he hasn't warded and if it's pushed up. That's just specifically for low elo, okay? But this part, in my opinion, is one of the most important things. If we look at Peanut's item choice, he rushes Mobis. And I think the reason why he rushes Mobis in this particular instance is because Lee Sin versus Gragas, you if you shut down Lee Sin's early game, you're gonna naturally scout naturally outscale him mid to late game, okay? Uh, because that's just how the game works. Gragas gets items, he gets thing, blah blah blah. And Gragas is already a really good pick against Lee Sin in the first place. But if you shut down Lee Sin's early game, he's pretty much useless. Uh mid to late game. So he gets the Mobis, and for those of you who don't know, a natural jungle progression is like once a fight has happened top lane, they're probably not going to go back to top lane, like right away, and that's a really 
abnormal move to do. Some junglers do it, but to go straight back to top lane after a fight is kind of abnormal because there's no camps on this side of the map already. They've already had a fight. There'll be camps spawning up over here. So if you go bottom, um, not only can you look for the counter gank on bot or mid, or you can look for a gank on bot or mid, but you have the camps to farm just in case, you know, nothing happens. Um, but he rushes Mobies, and he goes straight to mid lane, because if we look at the state of mid lane, we can't see it, but their health is really low. So obviously you want to try and get there, like, as soon as possible, and that's probably your most, um, your highest chance of getting a kill, because he's so fucking low. So look, he goes for it. He gets stunned. He pops the summoners, and then we le we see Lee Sin bot. Now, if Lee Sin got this gank, this would be a completely different game. If the gank was successful, the lane, this game would be completely different, but he didn't. And because Gragas has Mobis, first deducting two things. Going back to that strategy about how he's not going to go top lane again, that's really abnormal, so he's going to go bot side. Because Lee Sin, didn't go, Lee Sin didn't go mid, that's going to leave one lane left, which is bot, so he ganks bot, okay? So once again, the strategy of he's not going top, he didn't go mid, because if he did, if Lee Sin was going mid, he would have counter ganked this. He would have been here to show presence, but he didn't. Which leaves only one lane left, which is bot. They were able to survive, and now Gragas goes and matches his gank. And remember what I said about shutting down Lee Sin's early game, so that he doesn't snowball it? Blitzcrank got a kill, and Alistair doesn't really mean anything. He's just matching him right now. Gets the kill. Syndra stays. Watch this shit. And he's just looking at, like, right now, he's just looking for another kill. Syndra stays. He uses his Mobis, like, his Mobis kick back, and then he just gets the kill. Easy kill. Bang. Pushes the lane. And now, all of a sudden, Syndra's at a disadvantage, even though she has a, you know, actually a shit ton more CS. And now, look, he goes back bot. And now his first farming camp. His first camp that he farms after after Gromp is like what, three minutes later or some shit? So it just shows the importance of him trying to match Lee Sin's gank. And also the jungler's goal always is to be at the right place at the right time. There are so many fights on the mid and bot side of the map that um that Peanut was prepared for and he sacrificed his farming in order to um, to match Lee Sin, so that Lee Sin's completely useless. Also, because mid lane was, like, super easy as fuck ganks in the first place. And then where's my fucking notes? Hold up. There's one move that completely ends the game. It's completely GG after this point. Um, because if you look at the thing at this point, if you look at the game at this point, no one else is actually super far in front. Xerath might even be behind. A little bit, maybe. Actually, no, he's not, because he's got the extra Thorns Ring. But he's not as far as you think he is, because... He has 13 CS down, um, and all the kills are on Gragas, except for this one. So bot lane is the only lane that's properly, like, ahead. Um, and now, because he's the jungler, he has to be able to transfer that lead that he has and transfer it to the other lanes. Okay, so the next move that he does, uh, which I think proper move is at, like, 13 minutes or some shit, is the most important one that you need to pay attention to. Where is it? So it goes back to base gets a cinder hulk and this is the rinse and repeat okay of um the level the early levels because the blue buff would have respawned he probably gave it over to syndra um and if he sees syndra has blue buff then the natural progression is obviously to go get your other buff okay for the enemy jungle um it's the same thing in your early levels you get your red buff you do a camp and then you go get your other buff so we can assume that leeson's on the top side of the map and he does the same shit he just matches them when I say match, by the way, I mean he's just on equal sides of the map, so he's just trying to, you know, what Lee Sin does, he just keeps following him type shit, in order to shut down Lee Sin's early game presence. Gets the camp, blah, 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 and look, he matches him again. And once again, this is super important, there's so much stuff here that you're probably not able to see, but, like I said, he got the buff, the natural progression is to go get his other buff, which means that he's either going to gank mid or top. He's not going to gank mid because Lee Sin isn't able to 100-0 to zero Xerath by himself because Syndra isn't even in lane. Which leaves one lane left, okay? If Lee Sin's on the top side of the map, we deduced, if that's a word, that Xerath wasn't going to be ganked. The only place that's left to gank for Lee Sin is top lane, okay? Does that make sense? If that doesn't make sense, ask me any questions. Answer. Ask me questions in the comments. I'll be sure to tell you to go get fucked. <laughs> Not jokes, I'm joking. And look, getting warding, because we know Lee Sin's on the top side of the map, he pushes us, and then he goes back. 
And then he goes back to the lanes that he's, um... He wants to snowball, which is his bot lane. Where is it? Maybe he timed Blitz's um, flash just then, because they go for a play really soon on Blitz. That I'm assuming they did because they knew he had no flash. Same thing with mid. So he's on the bot side of the map now. He knows Syndra has no summoners. Or he, she had no summoners. Maybe they just came up. And Blitzcrank has no flash. Definitely. 100%. Now I'll show you the move that ends the game. That makes it GG. What the fuck is my mates? Oh, this one. Look. Nice easy gank onto Blitzcrank. Getting vision control. Just waiting. Making plays on the one that has no flash, okay? So let's write that down as well. Essentials. So, oh, so what the fuck do I write down? Match Lee Sin Ganks. Moby's the pressure opposite side of the map. Only one lane needs to be winning. And um, making plays on those with no flash. That's super important. They know where Lee Sin is because he's clearing his pink. Uh, he's clearing one of their pink wards right now, and he put his own pink ward, pink ward there. So they know he's on the bottom side of the map. And look, he's still matching him. He just follows him to shut down his early presence. Because, like I said, if he shuts down his early presence, it's GG. Now this is the most important part. Okay, this is the the deal breaker. So Jin's super low. He places the pink ward here, and obviously that means that it's, you know, they can't see, like they don't have vision of this brush anymore. And because Alistair is back, and Jin is pushing up, from these two perspective, okay, they're thinking, okay, Jin's by himself, because, you know, the pink ward's here, Alistair's not there. So we're going to go for the kill. He's super, like, from their perspective, like, this is easy, this is like lamb to the slaughter type shit. This is the move that GG's it. Gives ADC a double kill. And then they, and obviously in Korea, they know how to snowball the shit. Um, this is a lot of information to take in, but I'm going to give you the essentials, okay? The first essential is matching Lee Sin ganks. If you are versing an early game jungler like Evelyn or Shaco, um, specifically Evelyn, if you put Evelyn behind or Lee Sin behind, the next time, you know, you're, you're stopping their power spike. Their power spike is in the early to mid game. And if you sh you shut that out, you're essentially making it a 4v5. Gragas, or Peanut, or whatever the fuck, um, did a really, really good just job this game of just matching Lee Sin ganks. Goes top, matches his gank. Goes bot, matches his gank. He applied pressure to the mid lane because it was there, you know, because they were having fights and it was easy it was easy pressure. But all he did was match Lee Sin ganks and pick up kills where he needed to, which comes back to the concept of being at the right place at the right time. But this one, in particular is super important that move just there because now he has a carry that can carry him that can carry and win the game if you look at the team comp these guys team comp is way better than their one so when they go for a team fight um all they have to do is protect Jin, make sure that he doesn't die and make sure he hits freaking he gets free shots off make sure that akali doesn't jump on him make sure that twitch doesn't invis out of nowhere and jump on him and then they win the game because that's where that's their win condition is team fighting these guys, their win condition isn't isn't just straight hit on team fight. They don't have a really solid um, frontliner like you know Clayton and Gragas. They don't have that or Alistair. So all they have to do now, all Peanut has to do is protect Jin, make sure he doesn't die, and force a team fight. And when they force a team fight, the snowball rolls. I'll do like another minute or so of commentary, and then we'll go back. In this instance, he happily, Gragas happily goes to the top side of the map. So he's not protecting his Jin and his bot lane because they're under turret. There's no reason to, like, they're not going to get dove. Um, plus, they have a, a bit of vision here, vision here, vision here. So they know that they're not in any danger. So he goes to the top side of the map. He thinks that, oh, this is exactly what, this is in my opinion what Peanut's thinking. He does the rotation of the buffs and his red buff's about to come up. So he wants to get a ward just to spot, you know, his thing. Um, but he gets caught out. But because it's Gragas and Gragas' tank, he's shunned docks. Um, 
He just survives. Clint gets caught out, unfortunately. But that gives Jin free time to just go and get the turret. And I think it's first turret gold. And now which snowballs even further and further. They get free reign to hit the turret. Now they can push, go back, and then get this turret and snowball. Where is it? See, look, they push the wave. See, look, he goes bot to protect Jin, make sure that nothing happens to him. And then they just rotate mid. And then this is the start of the snowball. They force another fight because it's 4v5 because they know Twitch is bot. They pick up two kills and I think they get the turret. I'm not 100% sure. Ah, oh, never mind, they don't. But then the last, the, the team fight that ends the game is over here. They make a pick onto Syndra. Syndra did you sit? How'd they get this pick in the first place though? Maybe they caught her like clearing a ward or some shit. So they pick Syndra off. The only people that are strong on th these guys team, it's probably Akali. That's like the main one that they're trying to kill now because Akali's the main threat. And now, now it's just Twitch. These two don't matter, they're nothing. So now they just have to kill Twitch. Clint comes in, cleans it up. You look, look at this. He could have so easily jumped onto Gragas to get the kill, but you know, it's, intu it's intuition, is that the word? Or it's... I don't know what the word is. It's just the smarter decision. Like the one that looks like to most newbies would be kill Blitzcrank because he's low, but he jumps on Twitch because he's smart because that's the the most optimal decision is to CC the, um, the enemy ADC who's the biggest threat and take him out. So I'm going to end this here. Like I said, the most important thing is to match the enemy jungle gank. Okay, in this particular particular situation, if you stop Lee Sin's early game, early to mid game, he pretty much becomes useless throughout the game. Also, the easy pickups on mid lane. Okay, there was a couple of fights where, you know, because he had mobies, he was able to go and just get the easy pickings. And then the bot lane is super important. That move over here was so good. And that's the move that won them the game because they was able to get Jin snowballing. Because Jin is snowballing, now that all they have to do is get the turret, rotate mid, get that turret, force team fights, blah, 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 and it's GG. Okay. If you have any other questions, just let me know. I know this was a pretty long video, so if you stayed around to the end, good on you. No jokes. Um, I'm going to end this here. Put in the comments below, like, any questions you have. Like the video if you want to. If you don't like the video, I'll just cry just a little bit. No, have a good day. I love you. Stay beautiful. Shana Ducks.